Welcome again to this tutorial. Um, we will implement sign up and password reset in all of and we will use the all of documentation for that. First thing we need to do is to have a number of parameters set in our settings file. So let's look at that. There's actually four of them. If you look on the internet, it's pretty um, well known. What we want to do is that we have email as our identifier. So we don't want to use username, but we want to use email, which means that it has to be mandatory. And uh, it also means that we will not require a username. So the settings for this are, um, let's go to settings and put it in our base settings. There's four of them. First of all, account authentication method will be email, as I said. We will require an email. Normally, Django doesn't require that with a username, but now we need this. Then email verification is going to be mandatory, as I said, and then uh, the username is not going to be required. Now, I have to remark that behind the scenes, Django still uses the username but Olaf is generating a fake username which Django can use. So if you look at, for example, Django admin, then you will see that the username is still there, but that's a fake username generated by Olaf. Now it's very well possible to simulate uh, sending emails uh, for authentication via the console. Um, in fact, in our current settings, we have defined that the email backend is going to be the console, but we would like to do this with a real email service. Uh, so we'll, we'll comment this out, which means that we'll fall back to the default Django SMTP backend, which is suitable for sending emails. And we are going to, to use Gmail for that, which is okay for development, but obviously in deployment, you should use a transactional mail service like Mailgun or Mandrill or uh, Sendid or any SendGrid or any other transactional mail service. In order to set Gmail up for this, we need a setting in Gmail, which is called less secure apps. Um, this is a page in, of Google explaining um, what it actually is. Basically, Google is normally requiring OAuth 2 for Gmail, which means that it only gives a token to an application to use what it wants from Gmail, for, so that the, the exchange of information is on the basis of a token. But um, that will not work with Django. Um, Django needs username and password. So actually we are allowing Google now, we are allowing Django to have access to Google with a username and password. This is what it's doing. And if you read the instructions of Google, it's pretty straightforward how to use that setting. Uh, obviously it's a good idea to use a, um, an email account which you don't use for your personal or your, or your business uh, purpose so that uh, it's not very vital. Django is telling us which email settings that we need to use. Um, in the written documentation, there is more information about this, but there is a number of parameters and actually we need five or six of them. We will put them in our local.py file over here. I've taken out the sensitive information, so I'm going to paste this in. These are the four, the five parameters, uh, the host is going to be smtpgmail.com. We will use TLS. The port needs to be 587, that's specified by Google, and then your username and your password. I leave it at this. Um, I will change the real password offline. Now that we have our email set up, it's time to create a sign-up form. Uh, all of this um, only taking care of the email and the password, so if we want any extra fields, then we have to add another um, sign-up form, which takes care of that. Now let's see if we can find it. Yes, here it is in the settings, account sign-up form class. So what we have to do here is to create a sign-up form, which defines a method sign-up, um, and that will take care of the extra fields. So let's go over to our forms.py and create it. Well, I'm going to paste it in. This is the sign up form. Let's see how it looks like. Um, what we have here is a first name, a last name, and a display name, all part of our model. And basically, what, is, what sign up is doing is 
it is just assigning the clean data from the form to the respective fields of the user and then saving the user. Now, what we use here is um, get text. I've um, demonstrated that before to translate the names of the field. So we'll import that on the top so that Django knows how to find that. Now back to our settings here, it says that we have to put this parameter in our settings with the name of the form. So let's do that. Go to our settings. We will put it in base and we'll put it below here. And this is going to be the setting account sign up form form class and it's pointing to our form that we just created. Everything set up for the form. Time for the template now. Let's go over to our templates. Um, they are here. And let's create a signup.html template. Signup.html. And we can just basically copy the content that Olaf has on GitHub. So let's go over there and look at how they are doing that. Um, templates, account, and here are all the templates. And now if we look at the signup template, then all the information is here. And basically what it is doing it is, um, if you have an account, then you can sign in with the login URL. And if not, then you can submit a form which is expanded here and then is a redirect field which we will leave out because we don't really need it and a submit button that's basically all um, I'll, the only thing i'll do is i'll separate out the fields of the form just as we've done in login um, which was in a previous tutorial so i prepared this let's paste in all the fields that we need this is it uh, i'll walk you through it we extend again from the base card.html, which is generic format, which I made one of the previous tutorials with the use of Bootstrap. We load the i 18 and template tags, just as Olaf is doing as well. Then we have a title in the head and a title on the page using the card header block that was part of this template here. Then a card body, which is also part of that template with a form and as you, I told you I have separated out the fields so I'm setting up a field um, a row with two fields with the email and the display name then another row with two more fields the password and the confirmation of the password and another row with a first name and a last name and I use the form field.html template which I used previous tutorials as well and in it um, we use widget tweaks to style the input fields. Um, we use the same form field.html for every field, which takes care of styling, which is the same across all the fields. Then we have the submit button with an added class, which is standard bootstrap, and then we can sign up here. Below there's a footer. If we already have an account, then we can log in. I've just copied that from here. Um, I've replaced the URL with account login, which is a standard all of account login as well. But this one is fixed and that one is variable. Doesn't really matter very much. Um, but if we um, would click on this link, then we would be taken back to the login page. It's about time that we test everything out. So let's go into our project. Start the virtual environment. Start the server and open up the web page. There is the egg, and let's see if we can go to the sign up page, which is here. We see that we are already logged in, so I need to log out first. Okay. Accounts slash sign up and this is the sign up page that we just made so let's log in as a super user um, no well super user already exists so let's create a new account 
with an email that we have. I will use Paul password first name last name and sign up okay we have message that we have to go to our email and click the link in our email let's go to the email here is the link and if we click it then we are have a new template which asks us to confirm that it's really us and then we should be able to sign in yes there we are now there's a couple of things we need to tidy up first of all you might have seen that um, the verification templates were not very nicely styled so we will add that as well um, we've, I've just copied them over from all of and added my own styling to that I can put them here in this directory so this is the first one and the second one great if we look at the text then you might recognize the text from the messages that we've just seen now another thing you might have noticed is that the message that we got from got, got was from example.com and this is something that is in the site parameter of the Django admin. Let's go over there and I'll show you Django admin. I need to you log in as a super user first. If we go to sites then we can see here is the example.com and obviously we don't want that we want to have a nicer URL name uh, nicer domain name so let's put that here and as a display name we put Python install as well and we save that so the next time we are getting a message hopefully we are getting this new name here actually there is another parameter also example.com which is in our settings which is not very often used but let's go there anyway um, where is it there is an example.com here as well which is used by wagtail for some admin purposes so let's change that into this as well and then there's one last thing we need to do which is the password we set um, as you have seen in the login page, let's first log out, log out, and then log in. You can see that we have a password reset. Um, this, this is something that we want to style as well. Now, Jen, um, all of is giving us all the information about this. Let's go back here and you can see that there are a number of templates here, password reset, and then actually the flow is that, um, I'll show you the flow, but we need all these four templates and we can style them the way we want. So I've done that before. Let's go to user auth to account and add the four templates. There we are. These are the four templates, add them, great and now we need to um, start up well the server has already started up yes we need to refresh let's see if if this works forgot the password we need to email reset okay this is the second template we've sent an email let's go there see if the email has arrived yes it has and you can see that the domain is now correct we collect the confirmation we click the confirmation link we reset the password which is again another template and this is the last template the password has been changed that's it for this tutorial next time we're going to update and delete some users